Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward and now we're going to begin part 7 of our Dragon series. And while you were sleeping, I went ahead and went in and took our texture map that we had made and touched it up some in Photoshop as you can see here. Control up, make it full screen so you can kind of see what's going on. I added some uh, lighter color, excuse me, lighter color and uh, kind of a cloudy effect to the webbing part on the wings and then on the pads of the feet and then underneath the the jaw there. So um, anyways I encourage you to go ahead and, and add some extra detail to yours if you like. Um, I'll go ahead and do a quick render here so you can kinda see what it's gonna look like. I say quick render. I also added the subsurface scattering to kinda give it a little softer look and then applied the tune shader technique that I showed in the in the tune shader uh, tutorial that I made. So right now it's rendering the the subsurface scattering pass which it uses to calculate how the subsurface scattering will be applied to the model. So slowly but surely when you add the subsurface scattering it, it tends to slow the render time down some because it has to do extra calculations and then compensate for light showing behind it and through it and things like that. But uh, anyway, you can kind of see how it's coming out here. Just, just a little bit of extra detail. Also, I went ahead and added an eyeball texture to the to the sphere. I didn't quite use the same technique that I used in the eyeball tutorial that I made a while back. I pretty much just added a texture to the sphere and uh, lined it up properly and gave it a tune texture and sub subsurface scattering as well. So, anyways, this is kind of the the dragon that I have now and and feel free to, to tweak your texture map until it looks either the same or you can go your own direction you know it's it's your project whatever you want to do but uh, anyways so now we're pretty much done well skip the pretty much we are done with the texture mapping so let's go ahead and jump forward and start rigging this guy I want to go ahead and merge these two windows the wrong way let's go in 3d view there okay so Let's go ahead and go into side view by three on your numpad. I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. I was playing with this earlier, so I'll just overwrite my Dragon 07. There we go. And let's go ahead and start adding a rig. We'll go to the front view, actually, and line our cursor up on our blue line there. That's the exact center of our scene, of our model. Let me get it lined up. Uh, that's probably good enough. So we'll zoom out and then we'll come to the side view and go ahead and put it about where the the tail starts, it's kind of the end of the the rear hip. So we'll go ahead and shift A and we're gonna add an armature. We're just gonna do a single bone this time. If you watched my human meta rig tutorial, you might could go ahead and use that uh, to go ahead and jump in here. But since it's kind of a different uh, layout, different body structure, I'm just gonna go ahead and build it from scratch. It shouldn't take too long. A um, couple of things I want to do. Go ahead and go to your object data, and let's turn on B bone as I like to do. And then go to your object, and go down and turn on X-ray. And then you can kind of see it no matter where you are. You can see it through the model. So let's pop back to uh, the side view. Let's tab into edit mode and grab the tip of it, and just go ahead and move it up to about where the head will connect to the neck bone which is not really going to be at the end of the head, it kind of kind of comes up a little bit, so we'll just go right there. And then we'll count out how many bones we need. Let's see, one for the hip, spine, and chest. That's three, four, five, six, seven, and then the head bone will be eight. So we'll need eight sections, and so we need to subdivide this uh, and give it seven cuts. So there we go, and this actually the head bone will come over here. Oh, and I have it rotating around the 3D cursor, so make that median point again. Grab the joint for the head bone and put it right there. I go ahead and drag this all the way down to the tip of the nose. Later on, we'll uh, add a bone for the jaw, uh, and we'll turn off that uh, shape key that we made. But for now, we'll just leave it alone. Let's go ahead and line up the rest of the bones to kind of correspond with the shape of the body. Okay. And 
that's about right. Maybe, maybe just adjust this just a little bit. Okay. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and in on our keyboard, and we'll go ahead and name these as we're going instead of uh, one of, you know, instead of finishing up and then having to name everything afterwards. So let's go ahead and grab the one into pose mode. By the way, go ahead and grab that, and go ahead and scroll down until we see our item, and it says bone zero zero one. So I'll just name this head. And then I'll grab this guy. And we'll just name this instead of trying to do like neck tip or anything, we'll just name neck 01, neck 02, so on and so forth. Neck 03, neck 04, and then we'll go chest, spine, and hips. Okay. So, uh, before I go into the legs or, or tail or anything else, I'll just go ahead and set my, uh, my main spine and neck bones to be curved the way I want them to. So I grab this base one, I'm going to go to my bone settings here, kind of scroll up here, click the deform down arrow there to expand the panel, and I'm going to give it a few segments. We'll say five segments, and we'll do the same thing with all the rest of the neck bones so they curve nicely. Okay, you kind of see they're following the, sh the curve of the neck a little bit better now. And I want to do the same thing with my spine bone right there. We'll give that five segments as well. And I want to go ahead and grab this guy, move him up just a little bit. Maybe move this one back some. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So that's that. And why not? Let's go ahead and control alt s and kind of make this a little bit bigger so we can tell it's easily the head bone. And why not do that on the chest? Tab into edit mode first, of course. And the hips. Oh, there we go. That'll help later on if we want to just animate just the skeleton and turn the, turn the uh, mesh layer off. Speaking of, let's go ahead and turn that to object mode and we'll go ahead and put that hit M on your keyboard we'll go ahead and put it on this layer here so it's already separated out if you hold down shift and click on that layer you can get it back okay so let's keep going here let's go ahead and add our tail bones now grab the tip of the hip bone right there and just hit E to extrude out we'll just drag that all the way back to the tip and then let's count out how many we need now it's probably one two three four segments, so we'll cut this three times. W, subdivide, three cuts, and let's select all these and make them a little bit smaller. Control, Alt, S. There we go. Okay, get them lined up. And there we go. Same thing on this. Go to pose mode and give it, uh, deform, give it a few segments. We'll go ahead and do five again on this one. And there we go. Kind of see some, the curve isn't quite following like I'd like right there, so let's just pop into edit mode and kind of rearrange the, there we go. A little bit better, and maybe this guy come down. That's a little better. Okay. And why not, let's go ahead and make the tip of it a little bit larger as well. And let's make it wider. Remember, Control Alt S and then X will make it larger on the X axis. So there we go. And why not? Let's go ahead and do it on on these bones up here. And why not the head bone? Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and save. And now we'll go ahead and get into, I guess, the legs. We'll do, go ahead and do the legs. So let's go to front view and put our cursor about where the front shoulder is going to be. About right there. And we'll shift A. Actually, got to be in edit mode first. Shift A. And I'll add a bone there. We'll just go ahead and drag this down to the pad of the foot. And just drag it out. Okay. And let's give it one, two, three segments, so we'll need to subdivide it twice. And it says two when you first hit it, but uh, you gotta actually 
change the number to, to actually have that to register. So we'll drag this down to the wrist area and this will be around the elbow area. Let's go to front view and make sure everything's going to line up properly. Just grab the joint. Just the joint. There we go. Okay. And let's go ahead while we're at it, just go ahead and grab the shoulder bone and then shift select the chest bone and control P and keep the offset. So now the chest bone, now the arm is parented to the chest bone. All right. So now we will add our little claw bones, or t uh, little toes or whatever you want to call it. Let's rotate this around so it kind of faces control R. So it faces the same direction, say the middle toe is facing. And let's go ahead and do the other guys to rotate those as well. About like so. Yeah. Maybe just move these guys over just a little bit. Okay. So let's pop in a top view and let's put our cursor right about there and side view to make sure we're at the right height, which we were not. So let's put that there. And we'll go ahead and top view. Shift A to add a bone. Let's drag the tip out. Side view and drag it down. And let's turn on our axes, axes so we can uh, see which direction everything's facing. And I like to rotate everything along the, its x axis. If it's going to bend like at the elbow here, I want it to bend along its x axis, which it is right now. And looks like we need to rotate our toe. So Control R, bring that around. And actually, Z, it's good for the Z axis to point up. So there we go. And so I guess since the elbow would fold in, the arm would come up, it would be about right there. So we'll leave the arm Z axis alone. But all the other things, hmm, let's just select everything at A on your keyboard and Control N, Z axis up. And that should flip everything around the way it needs to be. Okay, so except for these two guys to follow it. Actually, let's just do this one. We'll just actually control R since it's facing the exact opposite way it should be facing. Just hit control R and then 180 on your numpad and then hit enter and it'll rotate it around perfectly the way it needs to go. So you rotate on the x axis, boom. X axis, boom. Okay. So let's get these toes done. Go in here and get that base. Let's move it back a little bit so it's a little more centered up on the toe. And now it needs to be rotated around a little bit again. There we go. And let's subdivide that a couple of times. Um, two times will be fine. He doesn't need three different rotations. Let's line it up with his joints of his finger. Okay. And, ooh, I forgot to name the tail. That's no problem. We'll go ahead and, let's go ahead and go in here and name these guys. So this is bone. This needs to be shoulder, we'll say front, dot L, remember dot L is for the left side, and this will be, uh, we'll say forearm, dot L, actually I guess it needs to be forearm, well we'll treat this as arms, so let's go back and name this one shoulder, dot L, and then when we get to the back we'll just name it thigh, dot L, okay, shoulder, dot L, and this needs to be forearm, Dot L. I think I renamed the <laughs> the whole armature to forearm, so let's just name that one Dragon. And I was talking with uh, Wes Burke, the uh, moderator of CG Cookie and Blender Cookie, and we came up with a name for this guy, kind of based off of the Dragon Heart uh, uh, Dragon movie, if you will. We decided on Quaid for to name after Randy Quaid, or not <laughs> not Randy Quaid, but Dennis Quaid, who played. Uh, the lead character in Dragonheart. So anyways, our dragon's name is Quaid. So we'll refer to him as Quaid from now on. So anyways, so we'll name this dragon, actually just, let's name him Quaid. All right. So we've got Quaid's uh, shoulder, forearm, and now we'll call this hand.l, okay. And then this will be, I guess we'll say pinky. Uh, 01.l and then pinky02.l 
And let's just grab that pinky and just copy it over to the other toes. Go into top view. It's again, seven on your numpad. I'll shift D, duplicate that over. And let's make it a little bigger so it fit that bigger toe. There we go. Name this one. I guess we'll name it, uh, since it's a middle finger, but it's kind of also the index finger. I'll just name it index. But index. 01.l okay and then index 02.l all right grab the both of them again and let's go into wireframe so we can kind of see an x-ray view and we'll shift d and we'll rotate this around and put it as his thumb and that's what we'll name this thumb 01.l and thumb 02.l. Alright. Back to solid view. And let's grab all three of these guys, parent them to our hand. Actually, is that what I want to do? Let's see, I need to set up IK constraints. Um yeah, we'll name we'll we'll do that. Control P. Keep the offset. And now, like I said, I want to set up IK constraints. So I'm gonna go ahead and do like I've done with, with the uh, other rigs that I've made. I'm gonna make an IK controller bone right here. So I'm just going to duplicate the hand, shift D, and then I'm going to control alt S to make it a little bigger so we can differentiate it from the actual hand bone and I'll name this IK hand.l. And let's go over to our bone settings here and make sure it's not going to be parented to anything and it is right now to the forearm. So just delete that and hit enter on your numpad. If you hit enter on your regular keyboard it'll it'll just say okay, accept what's there. But if you delete and hit enter on your numpad, it'll go ahead and empty it out, if that makes sense. Okay, so tab back out of uh, edit mode, and we'll go ahead and set up the IK chain on this. So we need to select uh, the IK controller first, shift select the forearm, shift I to add an IK chain, and then we'll go to our bone constraints and give it a chain length of two. So now we move this around, it follows along with it. But we need the hand to, to follow it uh, perfectly as well so when we rotate this the hand will follow so we'll just Z into wireframe view grab our actual hand bone and shift select actually grab the IK bone shift select the actual hand bone and control alt C control shift C actually sorry and we're gonna copy the rotation and everything sh it should world settings should be fine so now we tab back out of uh, our Z back out of wireframe view and now we grab our hand rotated around the actual hand follows suit and as you remember on our other rig tutorial I could go ahead and give this guy the forearm some extra segments and it'll twist along with the wrist whenever I rotate that the tip of it will follow along but it's kinda curving and we don't want that so just kill the ease in and ease out and it'll still follow. Alt rotate, Alt G, and there we go. So if he's climbing up a wall or something, his wrist will follow along with his hand. Okay. Now that wrist, looking at it now, it looks a little too high. So I'm going to go in edit mode. I'm going to grab both points there and just bring them down a little bit. And bring them over some. And go ahead and rotate these. Control R until they're kind of facing at an angle rather than straightforward and the same thing on the hand here like so alright now uh, rather than copy that whole process over again I'm just gonna just copy this whole front leg to the back of the kind of like we did when we were when we were first modeling this guy so we'll just shift to D and grab all that put it back here scale it down some line it up See, it needs to come in. There we go. And we'll just kind of rearrange the joints here. And I guess let's go ahead and rename it first. So we'll grab that. And remember, this needs to be thigh.l. Oops, I did a greater than instead of the dot l. There we go. And we'll go ahead and name this uh, shin.l. And then foot.l 
ikfoot.l. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this will be, I guess, pinky toe 01.l. Pinky toe 02.l. And we'll just add toe after all these finger names. Actually, 01 should go after the toe. Same thing here. Index toe 02.l. Almost done. Thumb toe dot zero one dot l and thumb toe zero two dot l. Okay, so everything should be renamed. Yes. Now we just need to line everything back up. Top view wireframe. Rotate that around. Line it back up. Take this guy. Okay, and now we'll line up the back feet. As you can see, it kind of looks like like a bird's leg that uh, the knee is facing the opposite way than it should, kind of faces backwards or something. But really what that is is the ankle. The actual knee is way up here, so let's put that up there. And then you kind of think of it like he's standing on his tiptoes, so we'll just bring that back there like that. And then the hip bone. There we go needed to come over and then I guess the knee needs to come over as well okay so that's looking good we just need to get everything rotated the correct way which it looks like it's pretty much set the way as is so we'll go ahead and tweak it just a little bit Maybe this guy's a little too much Okay, kind of see, I noticed the uh, reason I was going in there. Uh, when we tab into edit mode, we can see that everything's lined up properly, but then when we tab back into pose mode, everything kind of twists. That's because our, uh, our foot bone is following our IK bone, and if you go into edit mode, you can see on our axes that they're not lined up exactly the right way. So, just grab the one that's kind of offset and just control R and rotate it around until it matches up. So it still kind of moves a little bit, but not near as bad as it did. So I need to do the same thing up front because it's doing the same thing. So grab our hand bone, control R, and rotate it around. There we go. Notice what I was doing is I was lining, lining the axis controls up. So like, like so. So those line up evenly. It'll be okay. So there we go. And remember also, uh, if we go into edit mode with our bones that are going to be twisting along with the wrist and our ankle, if we turn the connected piece off, or section off, it should kind of ease some of that strange rotation there at the, like say this one, see how that's doing right there. If we turn that connected off of this bone, tab in edit mode, uncheck that. You can see that really really helps to remedy that. Okay, so let's select everything and, and move it around. Go ahead and save this. I haven't saved in a while. I don't want to crash. Um, okay, so we got our front leg and back leg all set. Now let's go ahead and jump on the wing. The wing, there's a few ways to do it. Um, the best way I found is just, just rig it like it looks, just a bone here, 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 and then kind of the finger bones, and then I guess we'll we'll mess with some of the uh, cloth uh, physics to make the webbing follow the way it should and look nicely when it's all folded up and everything. I've been playing with that for a while, which is kind of is why part 7 has taken a little while to come out, because I haven't found a perfect way to get those wings to fold up just right, but uh, we'll see what we can do. And okay, looking at this, I'm already seeing some some weirdness going on with the neck here. I think that probably occurred when I rotated all the bones for the the Z index to face up, or is it the Z 
direction to point up. So let's go ahead and fix those according to our Z axes. Z needs to point to the back, which this one is wrong. So let's control R and hit 180. Actually, the bone below it, I guess it uh, shows its its uh, axes there at the top of the bone. So this one's the one that needs to be flipped around. There we go. Bink. And this one's already set, so should be good now. There we go. If you ever have segments on a bone and, and you notice that they're they're all rotated strangely, uh, that's probably probably the reason because their axes aren't lined up the way they should be. Okay, so go ahead and save. And like I said, we'll go ahead and start on the wing part now. So I'll go ahead and put my cursor right at the base of the wing. Line it up. There we go. Shift A. Actually, tab in edit mode first. Shift A. Grab the tip of it. Move it all the way up to the tip of the wing. About right there. And then I need one, two, three segments. So I just need to subdivide it twice. There we go. Let's line those guys up. There we go. And uh, now uh, we'll just grab that joint right there and we'll shift A, actually not shift A, uh, hit E to extrude out. And then it'll still be parented to that joint. And we'll extrude out here. Like so. Okay. So it's good in this view. Go to this view and it's way, way off. So we just need to grab our individual joints there and drag them until they line up accordingly. And then we'll fix the roll as I'm sure some of it's messed up. Yeah. Uh, let's grab all those and see if we can't just do a quick control N Z axis up. And it doesn't want to work perfectly every time. But luckily we have the control R which will help us out. Let's have the Z axis face, I guess, kind of towards the way that the fingers of the wing are pointing, if you want to think of it that way. Fa the Z index will face this way. So let's rotate all those around until that way it can rotate on its x-axis this way. So uh, let's just grab this guy, control R, rotate it around. And it's kind of facing the right way, but it's opposite. So we'll just control R 180. There we go. And then this guy should be good already. This guy needs to flip around go and let's have the X's pointing towards the back so we'll control R180 of this guy as well and this way as well okay now they're pretty much facing the right way but we need to have them set to rotate exactly the same angle for when it, we fold them up so they'll fold up properly Control R these uh, Control R to get these guys. And one way we can test, uh, actually, is just go to back to pose mode and let's just rotate these guys. Uh, grab our rotate manipulator manipulator mode and go to normal orientation, and we'll rotate these on their x axis until they're pretty well touching, and then we can kind of tell if they're going to be lined up properly or not and they are not so let's tab in edit mode let's kind of control R get those two line up a little better looks way off now doesn't it let's see let's, I can't even tell what's what now let's undo those I guess the wing itself is kind of uh, rotated a little strangely the model so let's grab that guy which one there we go Okay, that'll probably be fine for now. That looks about, yeah, that looks pretty close. Let's see what it looks like on this guy. Eh, 
it's not perfect, but uh, it'll work for these purposes here. Um, so let's go ahead and name these guys. We'll call this um, wing base dot l, and this will be. I guess we'll call it uh, wing wrist. Why not? Dot l, and then this guy will be. Um, wing finger, I guess we'll call it 01.l wing finger 02.l and wing finger finger 03.l okay so there we go, and let's attach this to the shoulders as well tab in edit mode, control P keep the offset and I think I need to, yes, I need to parent the thigh bone to the hip instead of the shoulder. Keep the opposite. There we go. So now I rotate the shoulders around, the wings and the front legs follow, and then rotate the hips around, the back legs follow. And as you can see, I need to parent the tail to the hip bone as well. So there we go. All right. So now we're getting some progress here. Um, now that we've got our axes pretty well lined up the way we want, we can go ahead and turn those off and get them out of the way. Boom. There we go. Uh, a couple more things to do before we copy those over. Um, Let's do, why not, let's put a bone for the ear, and then we'll need one for the jaw. And then, I guess we can do just a simple, simple face rig um, for the eyebrows, and maybe one for the nostril flares, but uh, uh, we'll see how long that takes. Uh, one thing to do, since we're in the face now, uh, but we can't see it, because our bone is, is set to x-ray, and it's kind of hiding this mesh, so one other thing we can turn on here, and scroll up, uh, let's see, tab in edit mode, I think, no, let's see, maybe it's on the bone settings there, or no, 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 okay, it's an object, um, we have it set to x-ray, but up here it's set to texture, so if we set to wire, boom, it keeps a wireframe view, just like we would see if we were, if we hit Z on our keyboard, but it's only for the rig and then only for the bones that are that do not have uh, a constraint applied to them so anyways so let's go ahead and uh, finish up our rig here on the on the head put our cursor right let's turn off that shape key first so we can see so we'll see where that jawbone is going to go probably about right there and let's make sure it's centered up in the scene which is not there we go and center it back on the jaw where we need it and tab in edit mode in our skeleton there just go back to solid view Z Z comes in and out of wireframe view so we'll shift A add another bone drag it out to the tip of the jaw and let's name it jaw okay and like I said, we'll go ahead and put a bone for the ear, about right there, shift A, grab that. Let's kind of do this in a, maybe an unorthodox manner. We'll give it two segments, so a w, a w subdivide, let's drag this segment way down to the, almost to the tip. And so that way it has a steady base, and then we'll give this one some segments. I'll show you. Go to our bone settings, go down. Oh, gotta be in uh, pose mode. Oh, I was in pose mode. Uh, deform, segments, there it is. I looked right at it. And give that a few segments. So now, since it has that base, when I rotate this, it's gonna give it a nice curve. Whereas, if it didn't have the base, it wouldn't have the curve, it would just rotate all by itself. So, undo that. Okay, so we'll call this one earbase.l and then just ear.l. Okay, 
and um, I guess I didn't really compensate for any eyelids, so I guess we, we're not going to have him blink. Um, I guess, do snakes have eyelids? I don't know. A dragon's kind of based off of a snake, so maybe he doesn't blink at all. I don't know. I'm not a biologist by any means, so... Um, I guess we'll give him a little bit of eyebrow bone. A couple of bones there for his eyebrows. Just put that right there. And let's go back to front view. Shift A. Oh, got to be in edit mode. Shift A. Drag that down. We'll go ahead and bring it back to the back of the brow. And we'll go ahead and subdivide that once. And just grab the center of it and move it up. Like so. And we'll call this brow inner dot L. And this one will be brow outer dot L. And there we go. Um, so I think we're we're pretty set for this relatively simple rig for our dragon. Now we just need to copy the left side over to the right side. Just go to front view and let's get our cursor lined up perfectly in the center. I want to wireframe view and just click somewhere in the center there on the blue line so it's perfectly lined up in the center. Now I can go back to back to solid view and I'm going to select all these bones here on this left side. Like so, oh, before I do that, I want to set up the finger toe, the toe toe fingers, whatever. <laughs> the, these things on the ends of the feet and hands. Uh, I want those to rotate when I rotate this one like we did with the fingers on the Oh no, the human meta rig. Um, okay, I will see if we can't recover what we just crashed. I need to see what's going on with my computer, so stand by. Okay, so um, I could just open it up from our last save, but I think we've done some edits since then. So I'm going to do like I did before, recover auto save. And we're going to sort, or actually display a detailed list. And as one of the users, I'm sorry, I don't re remember which one it was. We can sort by date. These little icons right here. If we hit the little calendar looking guy, boom, it's going to sort it by most recent. So today is August the 3rd at about 8.15. So it saved one at 8.13. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully that'll be pretty close to where it was when it crashed. So we'll just recover that guy. And it came up, and uh, looks like the only thing we lost was the eyebrow, so that's not bad. So we'll go ahead and save this into where we're saving it already. Save it as Dragon 07, save. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just uh, quickly redo our eyebrow. Go to edit mode, put our cursor right there. Shift A, actually go into edit mode, Shift A. And just do the same thing we did. Sorry to make you watch this twice, but go ahead and rename that. Brow inner dot L. There we go. And brow outer dot L. Okay. Is everything still named ear and ear base? Yes. Jaw. All right. So now we're pretty well caught up back to where we were. Go ahead and save it. Okay. So, um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and line that uh, cursor back up in the center as we were doing before on the blue line. I mean, that's the center line. There we go. And uh, go ahead and save. <laughs> now I'm getting paranoid. I got to save every two seconds now. Uh, tab in edit mode. Select all these bones on the left side. Oh, right, I forgot. Just like I did earlier. It's a complete rerun here. Um, go ahead and save. <laughs> Grab uh, this guy, this guy, Control Shift C, copy rotation, we do our bones uh, constraints, local space, local space, and influence will be, we'll say, 0.75. And as another user said, again, sorry, I don't remember your name, um, if you turn on offset, you could have this influence set to 100, and you can still rotate it freely, as long as offset is set. If it's not set, you can't move it. But if it's offset is turned on, boom, you got plenty of control. So we'll, you know what? Let's go ahead and leave the influence at 100, just so we get a nice,
curl. There we go. Clear that rotation and do the same thing here. Control Shift C, copy, local, local offset. Copy, local, local offset. There we go. So now when we rotate these guys, like he can grip, grab onto something. So we'll just grab those. And like I did with the thumb bone in the previous ones, say he's clutching onto something that's kind of spherical, we'll need to rotate this guy around. As you can see, the tip of it's rotating as well. We don't want that. So we'll clear that out. So we just want these to copy the X rotation, like so. So now, boom, still follows, but then stays put. OK. Go ahead and save. And almost done. We'll do it on the back as, as well. Local, local, offset, only X. Same thing. And done. OK, so now, good. OK, select everything, clear out the rotations. And oh well, one other thing I want to I want the uh, the wing fingers to rotate along with this one. So when I curl this one down, I want these two to follow suit. So let's do that. Select that guy. Shift select that guy. Control Shift C. Copy rotation. Local, local. But I don't want it to be a hundred percent this time. And I don't really need to turn off the offset because I don't really there there'll never be a really a reason to uh, to change these rotations from this one. So when I rotate this guy, that needs to be probably a third. So we'll have two thirds. It'd be kind of like the hand roll that we did on the human metarig. So this will just be, we'll say, 0.33. Uh, three, three. And then this guy, copy that one as well, local, local, and change that to 0.66. Actually, maybe that needs to be 0.33 three, three as well. Maybe this one needs to be 0 0.66. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, there we go. So when we fold up the wings, these guys will follow. And maybe that's too much, because right when I get right about here, I still want them to be even, not touching this guy yet. So let's lower this one down some. About 0.6 is good, looks like. And this one, and maybe a little bit less again. OK. So now those, the joints would be all folded up nicely. OK, so we'll clear that out. And now I think, go ahead and save. Well, another thing we need to mess with is how we're going to control the head. And actually, I need to connect these extra bones I put in here to our head bone. Control P, keep the offset. So I'll rotate the head. We need to figure out, like, say we want the head to come down. We can just grab the base of the neck and that'll rotate the whole thing. But say he wants to stay looking forward, let's we'll grab that, get our bone settings here, and we don't want to inherit the rotation, so just uncheck that guy. So now we rotate this, the head's going to stay looking forward. And I kind of like this part of the neck to kind of do the same thing, so let's turn that off. kind of walking and then maybe we can give it a little bit more realism if we do some copying copy rotation copying so we'll do that and it's going to be local of course and let's uh, invert this one on the x-axis so when I rotate this down that one's going to rotate up like so but that's a little too much so let's turn the influence down to let's say try point point five so there we go Maybe even less. Let's try point two five, and then we'll copy that also to this guy. Local, local, invert. Point two five. Hmm. Maybe that doesn't need. To, well, yeah. I, hmm. The neck bone is a very strange thing to try to rig and make it look proper. But that's where your skills as an animator come in. You can get it 
to look realistic by rotating it as it needs to. Like so. Okay. And I guess before we finish, we should do the same thing on the tail. So like when he rotates his hips, we want the tail to kind of rotate the opposite way. So let's grab that and copy the rotation. Local, local, and I guess we're rotating. Um, well, I'm not sure which direction that is. Let's turn on our axes so we can see. Looks like it's rotating along the Z. So there we go. Back to the constraints. And if I invert it, I don't think that's not quite what I want. I think leaving it normal will be fine. And we'll do the same thing uh, with these, this one here. Local and local. Okay, so now when he swings that, boosh, boosh. And why not this one as well? Local, local. Okay, and now uh, go ahead and turn on these offsets because we might decide we want it to be a little bit different. Okay, so. Alright. And then, bam, bam. Okay. I like my sound effects, as you can tell. Select everything, A, Alt R, clear out all your rotations. And let's go ahead and turn those axes back axes back off. Hit save. And now we are ready to copy over. So now we tap into edit mode. Our cursor is still set in the center. Yes. Select all these guys here on the left. Okay, good to go. And we will make sure we're rotating around the 3D cursor. Shift D to duplicate, scale, X, negative one. Boom, there we go. It should be pretty well copied exactly to the other side, so we'll tab out. Looks good. And uh, we'll go back into edit mode. Armature flip names. So we can get, as you can see, it's shoulder front dot L dot zero zero one. We want that to be dot R. So armature flip names and boom. There we go. Uh, before I come out of edit mode, we'll go ahead and fix any bone roll problems. So let's go ahead and select the left side again. Everything in here. And like I mentioned in the human meta rig, we just hit control R. Actually, we've got to turn on the x-axis mirror first. So turn that on. Now we'll hit control R and watch this side. You can see some of the bones flip into place. There we go. So now we tab out. Everything should be mirrored pretty well symmetrically. So let's grab this, the foot, say, just uh, go back to median point rotation. Rotate that around. And then we'll copy all this, grab all that, and then hit the copies current pose, and then paste it. And it should be perfectly even. Okay, so that is pretty well rigged up, I think. And uh, I guess in part seven, we'll work on um, I guess I need to clear out its location as well. Go ahead and save. And then in part, uh, part eight, we'll go ahead and apply the rig to the model and make sure all the, um, all the weight, paint, weight, weight painting is proper. And we'll go ahead and start playing with uh, the uh, cloth settings for the, the webbing in between the wing fingers. Okay, so anyways, um, hopefully that didn't last too long. Um, I'm not sure what time I started, so um, hopefully you learned a thing or two and uh, wasn't a lot of repetition from previous rig tutorials. Um, I haven't done a quadru quadruped before, so maybe that'll kind of help out. I guess it'll make a big difference when we start animating this guy. But anyways, so that'll be it for part seven. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward, and uh, we're going to be going into part eight of our Dragon tutorial series here. Uh, when last I left you, we had just finished building the rig for our dragon, whom we named Quaid. So Quaid has a skeleton now, we just need to apply it. And also one thing you might have noticed if you watched the video closely, I failed to copy over the eyebrow and ear bones. So I went ahead and did that while you weren't looking, and if you downloaded the, the blend file, 
uh, from from Blender Cookie, you'll notice that I went ahead and saved that there. Uh, so, anyways, if you haven't done it, go ahead and do that. Uh, just refer back to part seven where I cloned the other, or excuse me, duplicated the other bones. Some of that three D S Max language <laughs> sticking with me after all these years. Um, so, anyways, once you get that done, now you can continue here. Uh, first thing I want to do, since we set up a, a shape key previously, go to here, and remember the jaw open, we can see that. We don't want to control it this way, we want to control it with this jawbone that we made. So let's, uh, let's look at our shape keys, or excuse me, our vertex groups here. We have one called jaw, so I want to go ahead and, and rename this one to, let's name it jaw, uh, shape key okay and then because this bone here is named jaw also and when we apply the rig to the mesh it's it'll overwrite that name so anyways um, so let's just do that let's grab the uh, the mesh then shift to grab one of the bones and control P and we're going to set the parent to the armature deform with automatic weights and it'll take a second and there we go and then for the most part uh, let's put this on median point. For the most part, uh, that automatic weight will give us what we're looking for. It'll it'll paint things pretty close to the way they need to be painted. However, sometimes you got to go and clean up. So, for example, right here, if we move the head around, you can kind of see those teeth are not moving as as they should. Also, I need to go ahead and while I'm here, go ahead and grab those eyeballs. Let's go into wireframe view. Sometimes it's really hard to select something if there's a bone in front of it in pose mode. So let's turn off that layer for now. Let's grab those eyeballs, deselect the rest of the mesh. Now we can turn that layer back on, back to solid view. Got those eyeballs selected, both of them first. Shift select that head bone, control P. And this one we're just going to set the parent to the bone. So now when we move it around, the eyeballs will follow along with the bone. Okay. So now we get to get those teeth to where they follow along as well, and the jaw here where it deforms properly. So let's undo that. Okay, and let's see what we can do here. Um, let's look in our, let's see, let's go to weight paint mode. We can see that our jaw is, it's almost the way we want, so we rotate it's one thing. It's it's a nice thing you can do while you're in weight paint mode. Is you can you can still manipulate the bones and where they're moving. So what I was going to do was use the vertex group that we did when we made our jawbone, but it doesn't really look like I need to. Well, actually, I will for the teeth because the bottom teeth are not coming down. So let's do this. Let's tab into edit mode, and let's uh, select that that vertex group that we made. Should be at the way at the top. There we go. Jaw shape key. Select all those guys, and let's find the other jaw right there, and we're going to assign them to that guy. So now we tab back in edit mode, you can see all those teeth are down there in the bottom now. Okay, so let's grab the, the head bone, which is that guy right there, and let's just go ahead and click in here and just start painting those teeth in. And let's increase our strength on our brush right there. You know what? An easier way to do this, just go to side view, tab into edit mode. Let's get our vertex selection. Hit A to deselect everything. Click and just drag across those guys. And uh, go ahead and assign them just like we did with the other teeth. And boom, automatically sticks them on there. Now we didn't make a bone for the tongue. So as you can see, it's kind of, a ch you know, it's kind of weighted to both the head and the tongue, which is good because it'll kind of follow along both but yet stay in the middle so um, if you like you can go ahead and rig a uh, put you know uh, go further with the rig and go ahead and put a tongue bone on there if you like but uh, for this purpose uh, I don't think it's 100 percent necessary so anyways uh, let's go ahead and start cleaning up the rest of the head because I can see some other issues here uh, let's do one thing that'll help save us some time if we go over here turn on X mirror so now when we paint over here on this, for example, on this horn, it's going to paint on the mirror side over there so we don't have to do it twice. Saves a lot of time. 
Let's get all those painted in. We want those 100% parented to the head because they're solid, firm objects. We don't want them parented to anything else but the head. So another thing we can do, pop back into edit mode. Let's select all of those guys, all of the vertices that make up the horns. There we go. And that guy. And a couple of strays right there. All right. Now we have those selected in edit mode. We can tab back out into our weight paint. Actually, one more thing. Go back into edit mode and go ahead and hit assign so we know that they're assigned to the head. And I'm thinking that the ear bones might have, yep, you can see that lighter blue shade. Tab in edit mode since we have the ears, excuse me, the ear weight selected already. Scroll, there it is, ear.r, and then should be ear based. Uh, yeah, oops, hit my Windows button on accident. Um, we can see that the, the horns are kind of connected to both of those. We don't want the horns moving at all. So, tab into edit mode. Those are selected. This vertex group is already selected. So, remove those vertices from that vertex group. And we'll tab out. Do the same thing here. Tap into edit mode. Remove. Good. Same thing on this side. Remove. Too bad the X mirror doesn't work when you're doing this. I say too bad, maybe it's a good thing. I remove. You might make a mistake on accident at some point. Okay, and that eyebrow needs to come off. Remove. Probably this one as well. Yep. Uh, where'd it go? Oh, it didn't tap in edit mode. There we go. Okay. So now the horns should only, well, they might be on the neck too. Yep. Gotta watch them. There we go. Maybe this one too. Okay. Should be all set. The horns should only be on the head. Yes. Okay. And the jaw should be fine. Actually, might be coming up a little too high here on the cheekbones because it's affecting the eyelids as well. We don't want the, that to happen. So let's turn our brush to, let's get this a little bigger here. Okay, let's set the, tool mix, okay, there it is, tool mix. We want it to subtract. So now we click on there, boom, clears it out. Great. Okay, so let's kind of clean up the rest of the bones in the general vicinity. Gonna make sure you deselect around the bottom of the eyelid there because we don't want that coming off of the eyeball if he's to, say, glare down some. There we go. Did I not name these guys? Surely I did. Where's it at? Go back to object mode. Brow enter. Ah, I put a. There's an apostrophe after it for some reason. There we go. Just wondering why the. Uh, yep. Ha. Huh. Silly me. I forgot to. To name them properly after I created them. Um. Make sure the ears are. Okay. And before I forget, let's go ahead and save as Blender or Dragon 08. Save. Okay. All right, so now the X axis mirror should work. I want to subtract this guy right here. Okay, there. Oops, get some in here. Skinning can be slow and tedious sometimes. But I think that's good. Yeah, all right. So now, uh, I think that's pretty much the only thing that really needs our special attention on the cleanup part. Uh, I've, I've had some questions and some thoughts on the webbing between the little wing finger areas, the webbing if you call it. Um, for the most part, our weights kind of, they work pretty well. 
for the most part. Now, if you're wanting to get wanting to get really uh, really meticulous with it, let's grab our rotator. There we go. Some more, a little more precise rotations. Uh, if you want to get really meticulous with it, say you're going to making an animation where he's asleep or something like that with his wings folded up, then you might want to try a different technique. Um, one thing I'm going to show you here in just a couple of seconds after I kind of get this situated here. is the cloth simulator. If you've been following the Durian project, you'll notice that they obviously have a dragon as well, and they were having some issues with the dragon's wings. So rather than duplicate their issues and, and take as long as they had to take to figure it out, I'll just kind of point you in the right direction and and then maybe you can... Uh, Jonathan Williamson just did a cloth simulation tutorial so maybe you can look at that and kind of get some more ideas from that so but anyways uh, what I'm doing right now is I just folded the wing up as you can see I'm gonna go ahead and copy that paste it to the other wing so that now they're even and right here in my timeline I'm just gonna on frame 30 I'm gonna go ahead and select these guys as well okay and I'm going to go ahead and hit I on my keyboard and I'm gonna insert a keyframe and it's going to be on the location, rotation, and scale. I always like to do all three bases, even though I've only rotated it. I like to put a keyframe on all fronts, rotation, uh, location, and scaling. That way it gets a keyframe at that point in time, no matter what else it's doing. So now I'll go, I hit the uh, all the way, the jump to the first frame. So it's basically the fast rewind. So I'll get back to frame zero, actually frame one. And I'm going to hit... Alt R. So I'll clear out all those rotations to put them back in their default pose. I'm going to insert another frame here, location, rotation, scale. So now you can see him, he's folding his wings up like so. Now that's important when you're doing the cloth sim to kind of see how it's working because if they're just hanging there, then you won't really be able to see how they fold up. So, uh, so they're folding up, and then we'll go ahead and come up to frame, say, 50, and clear, out them, clear them out again. Alt R, and go ahead and hit I. You could also turn on the automatic keyframe insertion for any time you move a bone, it inserts a keyframe for it, but sometimes I just like to do it by hand. Um, so anyways, so now if we rewind all the way to the beginning, hit play, he's going to fold his wings up and then stretch them back out. Okay, so now, important thing I was I was playing with for the, for the cloth sim, remember like I said, for the most part the the automatic weight painting will work, but to make the cloth sim work a little better we're gonna to have to modify it some so let's uh, go ahead and save this and let's go into the the edit uh, mode and let's select all these vertices here inside the webbing area so we're gonna hit C actually deselect everything A on your keyboard hit C and let's scroll that down and just click in here and select all these guys don't want to select anything on the finger bones themselves just the webbing. Okay. And if you notice, I'm scrolling my mouse wheel to change the influence size of my little selection painter here. And I'm painting through both sides, as you can see. Uh, one problem, not problem, but one thing that you'll notice is when you're when you have your selection painter up like this, you cannot rotate your scene around. So it's good to put it in a nice angle and then just right click out of it when you need to rotate around. Um, go ahead and select it. Boom, that guy right there. Okay. And a little bit of these as well. Select these guys right there. Okay. And I want to go ahead and make another vertex group over here. So we'll just hit the plus sign and name this uh, web uh, wings. That'll work. Web underscore. I like to separate my words out with underscores. So we'll go ahead and assign those vertices to that for now. And then um, I can go ahead and deselect them and just do it again on this side. Just paint those guys on there. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Okay. 
Now, if you're noticing, like I'll I'll paint and then I'll be and then I'll rotate around. You you might be thinking, well, I thought you couldn't rotate. Well, I'm right clicking af after I paint what I want. So I paint it a little bit, right click, then I can rotate around. Um, so sometimes my fingers just take over and I don't even have to think about it. They just control the scene the way I want. Muscle memory is great. Uh, okay, so we got this wing painted as well. So let's go ahead and assign them now. Uh, deselect everything, and if you hit select, it's going to select all those guys because we assigned them both. Okay, now um, let's tab into texture or excuse me, weight paint again, and let's go down to our web wings. There we go. Now this is pretty much the opposite of what we want. We want everything to be red except for what is. So, dive back into edit mode. We have our web wings selected. Let's go ahead and remove them from the selection, but don't do anything else yet. Go ahead and hit W, select inverse, and now we will assign. Okay, so tab back out and get the web wings group again. And that this is exactly what we want now. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, let's go ahead and go over to our physics panel. I'm going to hit add a cloth simulator and we want the pinning to be on. Click that, scroll down, should be all the way at the bottom. It's a lot of shape keys, or maybe it's alphabetical. Yes, there it is. Web wings. Okay, so tab back into object mode. Okay, so now when we hit play, since we have this cloth sim already applied, when we hit play, it's going to it's going to run the simulator. Go ahead and turn off the layer with the bone so we can see, and the layer with the light so we can see our dragon a little better. So now, if I rewind all, all the way to the beginning, and I hit play, it's going to slowly, frame by frame, and you can see it, kind of the air, the virtual air kind of pushing those wings up, and they're kind of folding up like cloth. But there's a lot of collisions going on. So this is what I was talking about with the... the uh, developers with with uh, the durian project they had similar problems like this you have to play with all these presets the the stiffness and the, um, the bending and everything like that so um, you can we'll play with it just for a second just to kind of show you what it's like there's some presets here let's go to let's try leather I have thick leathery wings so let's see what if that looks any better it kind of takes slow frame by frame and already I see some issues right here it's it's passing through itself so what we have to do go ahead and pause that rewind it okay is we have to cloth collision is turned on but it needs to have collision with itself so we have to turn on self collision and this is where it starts getting hairy you gotta save it often because a lot of times Blender will crash because it's doing too many calculations and if your machine, your computer is not quite powerful enough, it's gonna eat up your memory really fast and it could cause crashes. So when you're messing with any type of simulator, save often. Um, so one thing you can do, once you get your, instead of trying to do it at like we're doing it right now, just kinda playing around with it and, and having it calculate on the fly uh, one thing you can do is just turn it all off set up your animations to do whatever and then once you get it done turn them back on and then you can do what's called baking and it's going to be right here cloth cache and you can give it a file name if you like but it's not necessary and you have to pay attention right here in your file name or your start and end frames if you have a frame that's or excuse me a video that's you know 10 seconds long at 30 frames per second that's going to be 300 frames. So you want to make sure that your end frame is set to 300 instead of the default 250. So anyways, once you get everything all set up, you can bake. You get a little black box where you can see the mouse, and it'll get a number in it, and that'll tell you which frame it's on. And since we turned on that self-collision, it takes a lot of calculations. So um, I'll go ahead and pause my recording, and after it's done running the simulation I'll start recording it and you can take a look at what it looks like so uh, hold on I'll be right back 
Okay, I've let this sit for a little over 20 minutes. As you can see, it's only on frame 13 by now. So, anyways, I'll go ahead and cancel it. The way you cancel it, you should just hit escape. And it'll it'll uh, run a little thing, and then I'll be good to go. So we can at least play the first 13 frames. Ooh, see, it gets kind of ugly. It has some self-collisions and... and uh, Anyways, unless you have a lot of patience, it's probably best just to stick with the, the default or the, uh, the automatic weight painting that, uh, that we played with before. So, anyways, we got this mesh, this mess up mesh now. The way we, how are we going to fix that? We'll just hit free bake and it'll clear it out. And then we just go ahead and remove that cloth sim and boom, there we go, back to normal. So, anyways. Um, it's not perfect, but like I said, if you have some more patience and uh, want to play with some more of the cloths, then, then feel free to do just that. Um, so, anyways, I promised you some cool poses, so let's, uh, let's just see what we can do. Um, let's go ahead and turn on our, our, uh, our rig layer there, and let's, uh, let's see if we can't, uh, give him a pose like he's, uh, He's a roaring at you or something. So let's, uh, let's grab that, I guess it's the front left foot side view. Let's go to the global uh, positioning there and uh, slide that forward some. And then this foot, we're going to slide backwards. And this foot's going to come forward a little bit. And this foot will come a little bit. And we'll rotate those out to the side. This guy a little bit as well. And this guy. Okay, the reason I went to global so is it, so that the feet stay flat on the ground. Now, if I went to uh, normal, if I kept it on normal and I rotate around, you can kind of see that it's going to rotate around the bone rather than the global x, y, z axis. So I'll kill that rotation there. Okay, so now he's kind of got one foot forward. And let's kind of grab his chest and and grab his hips and bring him forward some, like he's about to pounce on you or something. Rotate that around. Let's rotate the tail, kind of where it's whipping around. Have him cocking his head, and then you can play with all kinds of poses for this guy. And let's open that jaw up. There we go. Let's go to camera view. Let's turn that layer back on. And let's grab the, I guess the focus point. And uh, to make him look big, it's good to give him a nice high angle. So kind of make his feet look like they're fairly flat. So we're looking up at him. And another thing we can do is go to our camera settings over here. And you can see the default angle of our camera lens is 35, which is like 35 millimeter, like 35 millimeter lens. Uh, to make it look a little more realistic, Usually around at least 50 kind of helps. So let's try to reposition camera stuff now. And I guess if he's growling at you, he's probably not going to have his little wings at, you know, folded up like that. Oh, one thing that I forgot to do that you might notice if you do something like this is okay pay attention that's how that pose looks <laughs> uh, because if I touch the slider bar at all all of these poses are gonna clear out because I don't have the automatic keyframe insertion so they're gonna go back to the way they were when they well I guess the wings will the rest of the body should not because they don't have keyframes on them to begin with but the the wings will fall back to the keyframes see so but that's okay I guess it's kind of a nice pose there Turn the bone layer off. Rawr. Okay, now, um, as I mentioned back when I did the uh, the tower 
little tutorial thing. I was going to bring it in for our dragon, have him kind of perched on the top of it. So let's do that. So we'll go to File, Append, and we're going to go up, grab that tower.blend, and we can do a couple of things. We can go Scene and grab that Scene and bring it in. That's usually what I do. I think we could also go Mesh and grab the Mesh like that. But it uh, seems like sometimes I have problems with that. So I'll just do Scene. That always works. So we'll just link append that from the library. And now we'll go up here to Scene 01. And there's our tower. It looks like a chess piece or something. Huh? Let's go ahead and rename that. Actually, we don't need to because uh, we're going to delete that. So let's uh, right click on that guy, W. Actually, not W. Go down to Object, Make Links. Objects to scene, and we're gonna and we're gonna link it to the first scene. So now go back to the scene. You see it? There it is. Back to the scene. Go ahead and delete that guy. Now we'll grab our tower here and scale it up, and let's drag it down to where it's kind of below him. Maybe a little smaller. Kind of give him a nice, very large appearance. And now we're going to uh, we're we're going to mount our dragon onto the tower. So let's grab all those bones and let's pop into the uh, yeah, the animation. Where are all these guys? I don't know. Huh. I wonder where those came from. Uh, go to animation and let's grab all those keyframes and delete them out. So we don't want them there anymore. Go back to default. Got over those, all of those selected. Alt R. Clear out all the rotations and Alt G. All the locations. Now we want to turn on that automatic keyframe insertion. So let's have him kind of like he's just climbed up on top of it and he's just you know breaking over the top of it. So let's see what we can do to get that to look like that. Might take a little trial and error in some places. his hands up there. Rotate his chest around so his Yeah, there we go. He's climbing up on top of it. Let's get those fingers curled down. That's looking pretty nice, huh? And this this one will be doing kind of the same thing over here on the side. Maybe on this. I don't remember what you guys told me they were called. <laughs> the little hide behinds. Or parafoot or something. I don't remember. Uh, but uh, anyways, so this this hand will be gripping this side. And this is where the another time that the inverse kinematics on the hands is is nice because you can move the chest around, but the hands are never going to move. So have him where he's pretty much holding on by his hands, and his feet are still making the ascent, They're still climbing up. Move the hips out some just a little bit so the foot has room to clear there. A lot of times, as an animator, you can kind of you can kind of cheat a little bit. So like if he's crawling over it like this, you don't necessarily have to worry about the correct 100% placement of these back feet on there because they're hidden by the tower itself. So um, you can get away with not showing certain things. But since we're kind of just doing a nice pose here, I feel inclined to show 
all of that. Anyways. Almost there. Okay, so we've got our hands and feet on there pretty well. Let's, uh, let's get the wings and stuff looking pretty good. Or a little bit more action-y, action-packed. Let's have him where his neck's kind of bending more snakily. Like so. And the tail curved around. Let's curl that tip of it some. That's not a bad pose like that. Let's turn off that skeleton layer, see what it looks like. Actually, Mike can use a little bit more work here on this this hand here. Let's turn that back on. Actually, I need to pose that this finger out a little bit. And maybe the same with this guy. Okay. That's a pretty decent looking pose. Maybe curl these wings out just a little bit more. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Yeah. Looks like a judge up on a pulpit or, or what are they? The bench or something. I don't know. I don't go to court very much. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so we got a nice pose going. Let's uh, let's see what we can look like when we render it. Go to our camera view. And uh, let's make this a nice uh, portrait style render rather than the landscape general video types. So let's go to our camera settings right there and let's just flip-flop these. Let's make the top one 768 and the bottom one 1024. So 768, 1024. Okay, so now we got a nice portrait style. If you're wanting to do this for like a desktop, then you might want to do some different dimensions. You might keep it the original. but. Say we're looking up at him from the from the ground or something. And this is the fun thing about your final composition. You can play with whatever angle you want. Because it's 3D. Let's, one one problem with uh, tracking to a to a constraint like the camera is now, you can't twist it around. Like, I'd like to be able to twist it and kind of get a nice diagonal view, but I can't because it's pointing directly at that that empty. By the way, I'll go ahead and save this. So one way to get around that is to let's get another empty right where the camera is. We're gonna um, shift S cursor to selected. And then shift A, add a, an empty, scale that up. And this time we're going to, let's go grab the camera itself and go over to, where would that be, right there? Okay, it's gonna be over here under the object constraints. And go ahead and delete the track two and grab our empty there. And it's going to track to that constraint. And then we'll parent the camera to that new empty. Control P, object. So if we rotate the camera around to where it's pointing the same way. I'm 
sure there's an easier way to do this. But okay, that's about right. So now, um, if we grab the empty that our camera's parented to, you can see the camera moves along with it. I just scaled it up, by the way. Wow. So I want to move when I'm in camera view, but if you come out, you can move it around like so. And then you can grab the camera and zoom in, and you can also rotate it and such. So yeah, uh, it's probably better to do it without using an empty, but uh, for the sake of time, I'll just do that. Okay, so that's not a bad pose right there. Okay, let's let's go ahead and save that one, and let's give that a render. So let's see what that looks like. So we'll just render in a new window. There we go. Hopefully, everything's turned on that needs to be turned on. Looking pretty decent so far. Almost there. Zoom out some so you can see it on on the full screen. Okay, there we go. That's a nice little composition. No, so uh, something going on weird. It must be a part of the texture mapping is kind of off, maybe, but um, nothing to really to worry about. But uh, yeah. So, anyways, uh, you can just play with all or all types of different poses and and angles and things like that to get some nice. Uh, some nice compositions going. Um, throw some style in there. Like I said, I made this diagonal. Um, it, it's, it's, I don't say it's boring because of our subject matter is a dragon, and the dragons aren't boring, but it's more exciting when the camera is kind of at an odd angle. So, anyways, um, I'm going to call this done on part eight. Hopefully, you learned a couple of more things. And um, in part nine, We'll go over some, some basic animation techniques for, for a biped, multi-toed creature. So stay tuned, and I'll see you in part nine. Hello, and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward, and we are going to be doing part nine of our Dragon series now. Uh, this will probably be the, the final part of our Dragon series, and uh, it's going to go over some animation techniques. Uh, so uh, I'll go ahead and get started on that. First thing I'm going to do is, since we got our nice composition earlier, or in, in part uh, 8, with our, our little castle column here, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that now. Let's go ahead and delete it. And I'm going to select all of my bones in the armature and hit Alt-R. It's going to clear out every rotation, and Alt-G will clear out every location. And if I scaled any bones, I'd hit Alt-S to clear the pose, excuse me, to clear the scale. <coughs> Okay, so one thing I would like to do uh, just for later on when we're rendering is get a nice ground plane that he'll have a, which will throw a shadow, but it'll have a nice background. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I uh, just go into top view and I'm just going to hit uh, shift S. And what I'm going to do now is a couple of tricks I, I, I learned about after uh, I started this series. I'm going to snap the cursor to the center. And it's going to put the 3D cursor right in the center of the scene. Right now it's on his head because, remember, we started with the default cube and that was in the middle of the scene. So if we go over here and turn on this display, the grid floor, you can see that the, uh, the 3D cursor is indeed in the center of the scene. <clears throat> but uh, I'd like it to be at the floor, so really what I need to do now is move everything up to 
the ground plane, which as you can see in the side view is that green line, front view is the red line, and then if you look at it perspective view, it's going to be that grid. So anyways, uh, I want to move everything up above that line. Now what we could do is just grab all the bones and move those up like that, but then it would keep our bone or our center of our armature down here, that little orange dot is the center of the armature, and we don't want to do that in case we want to animate later on and we clear out all the poses and everything is going to put it back down there so I'm going to control Z and now I'm just going to go to object mode and then I can move the guy up move our dragon up there and uh, whenever I clear out poses and everything you see the orange dot followed along there at the end of his hips uh, now if I go back into pose mode and say I just do some just some random movements there and then select everything, Alt-R clears them out, and Alt-G clears out location, it still stays put right there. But like I said, if I would have moved it, say up there, for example, if the ground was up here instead, and then I hit Alt-S, or excuse me, Alt-G, it would have dropped it down, and that could have screwed up an animation that we might have been working on. So anyways, to move the whole armature, just, just go into object mode and move it that way. So anyway, said all that to say that. So let's select everything else in the scene and go ahead and move that up as well. There we go. And now, since our 3D cursor is right there at the ground plane, I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to add a plane. Scale this up. Now this is a, sort of a technique that Jonathan Williams Williamson showed you a while back, kind of just how to make a a uh, I can't remember what they're called, but it's like an endless floor type of thing where you don't have a separation between the floor and the sky. It's just a nice solid, uh, or no, there's no transition at all. It's just, all you can see is the shadow. So anyways, let me get my camera fixed up here. Oh yeah, I put it on there, didn't I? There we go. Okay, and let's clear out its rotation. Ooh, where'd it go? Clear out this guy's rotation. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. And just do the camera the way we were doing it before. Grab the camera, grab one of these empties, Control T, track to it, and just move the camera up like that, and there we go. So let's get our let's get it lined up a little bit better again. Okay, so now now if I render it out, as soon as it renders, go ahead and pause the recorder so you don't have to wait to see it. Okay, one reason it's taken so long is I had the resolution set really high from uh, when I created a, uh, a render for the for the banner there on the Blender Cookie site. Uh, so anyways, I just scaled that back down to 600 by, or 800 by 600 I guess, because it's 600 wide, 800 tall. Anyways, so you can see here that the now we have a shadow on our ground plane, uh, but it's cut off there. You can see definition between the ground and, and the background the sky. So there's a trick we can do, like I said, Jonathan Williams covered this already, so I'll just go real quick over it, just to make this ground plane be completely transparent except for the shadows are, that are being thrown on it. So I'm going to close this out and let's go ahead and make that quite a bit bigger. And you can see that line appearing back there, that's just the, the uh, limits of our camera. So if we grab our camera and go to the camera settings there, and change the distance, or the, excuse me, the end, the clipping. If you change that a little higher, you can see that ground plane appear a little bit more. So, anyways, if you drag it too far, it'll zero out. So, anyways, okay. So we'll grab this guy, go to our materials panel, add a new one, and then add a new material there, and go down here to shadow and set it to be shadows only. If you scroll back up here to do the preview, you can see that this this white to blue shade means that that's it's a Z index. It's the the color of the sky basically. We're just seeing everything on the other side of this of this ground plane will be sky color. So if our foot, for example, right here goes through the ground plane a little bit, just lower him down here. Zoom in here so you can see. If our foot goes through there and we render, it's going to be like his foot got cut off right there. Or, you know, it's stuck underground or something like that. 
Now, if we turn on transparency here, then we'll still be able to see the foot and it'll have shadow coming off like he's kind of stuck his hand through a, a sheet of glass or something like that. So I like to keep the ground plane just because it makes it look more look, or keep the, uh, the Z uh, transparency just because it looks like he's flattened against the ground rather than coming through it. So anyway, select all those guys and clear out the rotations and locations again. There we go. And now if I, well, let me, let me change the background colors real quick. So we'll, um, we've got our world settings here already, already right where we need to be. It's kind of a boring background. If you look, it's kind of a dark gray, it's kind of boring. So let's just let's change it up a little bit. Let's make it white. And then if we go paper sky, actually not paper sky, we go to blend sky, we can get a nice darkness fading down uh, to the white. Actually, it's the zenith color fading into the white. So I don't want total black, but just a nice gray. It kind of gives us a nice, clean, professional, you know, backdrop like a, you might see a photo shoot or something like that. So now if we render out, I'll go ahead and pause the recorder again. You can see in just a few seconds after it renders, Okay, now we can see our background. We've got the nice gray fading into the white, but uh, we can't really see a shadow very well. And I think that's due to our ambient occlusion settings there. Now, um, you might go ahead and watch the, the tutorial that Jonathan did about this because I have never been able to get a real solid reasoning behind why sometimes it shows the shadow and sometimes it doesn't. I guess if you lower it down, let's put it down about 0.1. And uh, let's give that a render, see what that looks like. It's F12. Go ahead and pause again. Okay, see, and it's still, you can't, still can't see it. So uh, maybe someone can give a few tips on why that is. Sometimes if you just turn it off altogether, uh, you, can, uh, you can see something then. So we'll render that. And one way to, to kind of cheat with the ambient inclusion, the reason I like to use it is because it kind of lights up uh, all around, like ambient lighting. But... Uh, in this particular case with that ground floor and the shadows, it's not wanting, wanting to work with me very well. So one way you can cheat with the ambient occlusion and kind of get it to look like it's got these shadows and everything around it is to use a hemi light. And as soon as this is finishes rendering, I will show you that. So now we turn that off, we can see our ground shadows here. And this, these lines that you see right here and right here are just the limits of the spotlights that we have on our dragon here. So I'm going to close that out. I'm going to front view and grab my spotlight there. Go down and change the clip end to way out and then also go up here to the size. Actually, that's not it. Uh, where is it at? Distance. There we go. Strip. Make that quite a bit bigger as well. And do the same thing on the other spotlight. Make the distance a lot further. I could just type in a number, but I could, you can also just click and drag. So we'll just do that. Um, okay, but like I was talking about, a hemi light, and that's a hemisphere light, is what that stands for. And it kind of lights up everything that it's pointing at. Like I'll put the cursor right there, Shift A, add a, a lamp. There they are. Hemi. If you rotate that around, you can kind of see it's going to stop right at the end of that dotted line, and it's going to encompass everything that this little semicircle here covers so it's gonna be like a half globe type of thing so we'll just scale it up you can scale it up just by hitting s on your on your keyboard or um, well I guess that's the only way to scale it up so anyways so we'll just put that down like this pointing up at him kinda of like the lights bouncing up off the floor and we need to change it to be very subtle so let's put it about 0.25 so it'd be 25 percent so now if we render we got some we'll have some nice like before, we don't have any light coming up from the bottom at all, and it should be. It should be reflecting off of this white floor. But uh, since we turned off the ambient occlusion, it's not doing that. So now, since we're cheating with the Hemi light, we should get some nice, decent shadows, or highlights underneath this body there. So I'll go ahead and let that render out. It's not taking too long. And now you can see that the, the shadows aren't quite so harsh there. They're still there, but they're a lot, lot more subdued. And since we increased our spotlight size, our shadows are no longer cut off. And uh, 
we got a nice ground shadow over our dragon now. So we got two separate lights, and that kind of throws off the authenticity look of it. So really, if you're wanting to do a nice render like this, you should go ahead and get rid of one of those spotlights. Um, so anyways, that's that's how we're going to get our ground plane, and we're going to... We're going to set the rest of our, our scene up here according to that. We're going to do like a walk cycle and then and then maybe a couple of cool animations there too. So I'll go ahead and close that out. And I want to go ahead and change my screen dimensions to be landscape-wise rather than portrait-wise. So, um, And like I said, I'll go ahead and kill one of these shadows or spotlights. So I'll go ahead and delete that guy. And just for kicks, let's go ahead and see what this looks like. I'll go ahead and render it out and pause the recorder so you don't have to wait through it again so hold on just a second and I'll render that out okay and as you can see we got the the one single shadow in there and there's some there's some messiness over here but again that's due to the the uh, distance that the spotlight is is projecting so if you want to get rid of that just either change the angle of your camera or change the angle of the spotlight or just make the spotlight go a further distance. So, anyways, that's all on the lighting that I'll do. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and save this as Dragon 09. Save. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try to start working on a walk cycle. I'm going to go into the side view. And since we got a quadruped here, it's going to be a little bit different from uh, a biped walk cycle. So. Let's go ahead and jump over to our animation panel. And you can see that we have some keyframes set up in here already, which we don't need. So let's go to Action Editor and see, is there any actions already created? There's quite a few, it looks like. I don't know how all those got in there. Quaid action. I guess that was just a still, that was a still pose when we were setting them up with the tower, wasn't it? So let's go ahead and just uh, delete that out. And we're going to make a new action. Let's call this one Walk. And let's go a little closer in here. And go ahead, let's see, make sure that your automatic keyframe insertion is turned on. Let's go ahead and back up all the way to frame 1. And we'll go ahead and start posing for the initial uh, beginning of the walk cycle. So, uh, quadrupeds walk kind of uh, with opposite feet. When their front left goes forward, their rear right goes forward so it's kind of the opposite so there we go and then while the front uh, left is going forward the front right is going back so and uh, we'll go ahead and have him where he's walking on his toes more or less let's go ahead and rotate those up some And get the right ones. Remember, I'm just hitting R twice to kind of get it to rotate whichever direction I want. If you just hit it once, it's going to rotate around that one axis, but if you hit it twice, you can kind of rotate it however you want to. And all this is putting a keyframe uh, wherever I drag. And this went back to Quaid action for some reason. I need to Put it on the correct one. Okay. So now grab all the things that we've moved. If you had the same issue as I did, grab all these segments that you've moved and go ahead and hit I to go ahead and put a location rotation scale keyframe on there. And I guess this guy moved as well. There we go. <clears throat> so now we're kind of taking a step forward, rolling up on our toes. Not our toes, but our dragon's toes, I guess. And the back foot is going to be coming up on its toes as well. So let's rotate that back some and get these toes where they're taking a step, pushing up off the ground. <clears throat> Maybe his head's kind of bobbing forward a little bit. The tail maybe is coming up some. Yeah, let's go ahead and fold those wings up. What do you say? So let's grab this guy. Let's get our rotate manipulator and make sure we're going to be in normal orientation. And let's rotate that down. 
not all the way just a little bit just so just to show that he's not getting ready to take off into the air let's go ahead and just copy those poses over to the other one there we go okay so now we got our first step or the first frame for our first step and now I like to go about five frames up so what I'm doing now is just uh, middle mouse clicking and dragging on the timeline and you can see it's moving and if you scroll the mouse wheel you can zoom into the keyframes so every five frames he's gonna make a different move and then you know blender will automatically fill in between those key frames so since I'm on frame one now I'll go up five frames which will be to frame six and we will go ahead and start the transitioning to the the other part of the pose. So now his feet are coming down onto the ground. You can see it's stretching that leg out, which is not good. It's not natural. So let's get it kind of where we need it, and then we'll have to rotate the upper part of the body down a little bit. Okay, so now let's drag this back and forth. Kind of see he's coming into that step. And let's go ahead and drag these back to where he looks like he's moving forward. But we're kind, of, we're kind of designing the walk cycle to be like he's walking on a treadmill. His actual forward momentum would, would, be, used, would be applied later on. So right now we're just getting the motion of the walk. So, anyways, and again, you can see that the leg is starting to straighten out here, and as I said, that's not good. So let's go ahead and rotate that up, ro rotate that up, and then kind of drag it up to where it looks like he's coming off the tip of his toe. Like that. Let me rotate that toe over there up a little bit. So now, just pretend he's on a treadmill, and you kind of picture it in your mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and have the head bob down a little bit more. This way, I just need to zoom into our keyframes up here a little bit better. And say the tail's kind of coming up a little bit more as well. So, okay, and then up to frame 11, another five frames up from six. And now this back foot's going to start coming forward, and the hips are going to rise up. And he's kicked off with his toes, so we're going to go ahead and swing those back. If you've watched Jurassic Park and paid attention to how the Tyrannosaurus Rex walks, you can notice that his toes kind of do a, a flick back like that. So it's flick, sort of. Of course, right here, they need to... I guess I just uh, animated the tip of the toe, didn't I? So I need to do the whole, the whole toe there. And then, there we go. Okay, so now let's move all the other arms and legs back. This foot's coming in. This hand's starting to move forward. Let's go and rotate that up and move its toes down. Let's go ahead and get in the front view here so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. this guy as well okay since we hadn't messed with those toes at all until that keyframe they're gonna stay bent actually maybe we did it on the first frame but uh, we need to go back to frame six and go ahead and straighten those back out because at this point they're still pushing up off the ground so let's get those rotated back up and then kind of see it taking place there. Animating walk cycles can get tedious from time to time if you if you don't have a very long attention span like I don't sometimes. So this hand right here just pushed up off the ground. So let's rotate it down a little bit more. Maybe bring it up. back yeah there we go 
close up there. Okay, go up to frame uh, 16, and we'll go ahead and keep following through with the walk. This hand's going to come back, and you can see it's starting to stretch out, so let's go ahead and rotate that some. Come back, get those fingers rolled up. And this foot's going to come back a little bit further, too. Let's start bringing the hips down just a little bit and the chest down some. And let's go ahead and bring these, the front hand up. Let's go ahead and rotate it up. He's reaching forward. And this foot's going to start coming a little forward. Now, it's going to be kind of awkward since his front and hind legs are so close together. Like right now, we've got the issue with the knee colliding with the elbow. Now we need to kind of worry about how to not let that happen. Let's rotate that up. Put that hand forward a little bit more. Maybe it's not starting to come off the ground yet. Get everything rotated back down. You could spend hours trying to get this kind of stuff just right. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Okay. It's looking decent. Let's go ahead and start rotating this foot up. Maybe we can bring those claws in a little bit more so they clear the ground as he's stepping forward. Maybe bring the hips up a little bit more. Rotate that foot. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Clears the ground, right? Just barely, but it does do it, so. Okay. Okay, now <laughs> a lot of things you notice as you're going. Looks like this hand is needs to have the, the claws rotating a little bit better. And right here they make contact, so start bending up. Apologize if this is starting to get a little tedious, but uh, it can happen. Okay. So we've got a nice toe flick and fingers stretching out. There we go. So actually, I guess we need to go ahead and get this foot ready to because we're almost done with the half of the walk cycle that we'll need to copy over to the other side okay so maybe we can just clear out those poles yeah there we go select all those instead of trying to rotate them back just hit alt r and it'll clear them out and at the same time we'll go ahead and insert a keyframe okay so we're getting somewhere at least Maybe that hand comes a little too far forward. There we go. Now, okay. So we've got about half of it done. Let's try this. Let's grab everything. Let's just hit uh, A to, get, to grab everything. And we're going to copy that pose right there. And then let's go up to frame 21 and paste the opposite. There we go. So now let's see how it looks. Hmm. Got some tweaking to do. It's like he comes too far forward on that first step. So let's actually let's move some things up a little bit on the y-axis. There we go. And the hips as well. Hmm. Spend hours working on this. But I know, we don't have hours to work on it. Okay. So let's copy that again and paste it. The op oops, opposite, there we go. Okay, and then let's copy the second frame. Paste it on frame 26. 
opposite. Oops, select everything, remember. Copy, paste. There we go. So now we should have a full. Hmm, I don't like that part right there. You should go ahead and come down. So I think we have one frame too many. So let's let's go right here and select all of these keyframes up here. You can see in the little little try or little uh, diamond shapes. Let's select all those and all of these. There's a lot of them. He's got a lot of bones, doesn't he? All these these okay let's go ahead and delete those keyframes and let's grab all these ones on the end like so and G move them over to where the other ones were so now there we go that's a little bit better yeah but we do need to do some more tweaking like right there you can see the toes on that front or that uh, rear left foot are going through the ground before they straighten up. So we need to fix that. In this frame, frame 16, this foot needs to go ahead and come up quite a bit more, like so. And then, yeah, there we go. Yeah, all right. So we've got a basic loop. Uh, let's see, which frame is it coinciding with? There we go. Okay, so frame 11, we're going to copy, grab everything, copy, go to frame 26, paste the opposite. Then frame 16, copy, frame 31, paste opposite. And frame 21, copy, 36, paste opposite. And that should be... Something's not coinciding with the first frame. I guess I got rid of it, didn't I? What does it look like there? Okay. So to make this a nice smooth loop, we need to replace that first frame with, I guess, this one. Copy, go back to frame one, paste opposite. There we go. Got a nice and we don't need frame 36. So let's go here and one thing we can do here uh, is scroll this over view all. Hmm. That didn't do what I was hoping it would do. I was hoping it would uh, kind of zoom out so we could see all of those keyframes, but I guess we'll have to just select them all again. And go ahead and delete them again. Okay, so now if we set our the length of our timeline to be the length of our walk cycle, which goes up to frame 31, so we make uh, frame 31 is the exact same as frame 1, so if it went 1 through 31, it would basically, and then looped, it would basically show the same frame twice. So what we want to do is actually have it stop at frame 30 and then loop. So now if we hit play, you can see it's looping through the walk cycle. So that's what he looks like walking. When he takes steps, the little toes flick back. Okay. And you could also do some residual motion in his wings if you wanted to. Uh, so now we've got a walk cycle. Uh, let's make use of it. So let's select just uh, one of his bones there, and let's go to the NLA editor. And you're going to see a lot of things in here. And what, the only thing we need to worry about, though, is our quade. And we want to add a track to it. Is it going to let me? There we go. Hit the little snowflake thing there. And you can see it auto automatically added that walk because that's the action that we have selected at this point. And now we need to hit N on our keyboard. And let's go ahead and scroll this window over some. And you can see that the action strip, which is the action that we just made, 
Uh, it loops from 1 to 31, but like I said before, it needs to loop to frame 30. And so now if we if we play this, it's just going to do it the one time. So actually, let's go ahead and set our end frame back up to 250. Uh, but you can scroll down here and see where it says action clip. Uh, playback settings scaling is just short of 100%. So set that at 1. And repeat is just once. So if we scroll the repeat up, you can see it starts looping. Each white line you see right there means that that's one segment, one cycle of the walk cycle. So now if we roll our cursor across there, you can see he's looping, he's going through the, the looped walk cycle. So that's, that's a quick, easy way to get a, a long walk out of one simple motion, one, one full step. You can just repeat it over and over, so it saves you a lot of time when you animate. So, uh, so anyways, I think uh, probably running out of time. Hopefully, that gives you enough to go off of. For, uh, you know what? Let me let me show you one more thing. Let's uh, turn off our walk cycle right there. See the little eyeball? Just click on that. And now, if you sc scroll your mouse, you won't see anything. So let's go back to our uh, dope sheet and then load the action editor which is already loaded and we don't have any actions loaded right now so let's add a new one and let's call this one head turn and what I'm gonna do now is set up an animation for him to do while he's walking so I'm gonna grab my neck and just kinda rotate it over and have him looking over to the side let's twist the neck around a little bit more and the neck his eyebrow. Where's his neck? There it is. Okay. And then go forward a little bit. Now if I hit view all, view, view all, it's going to show the, oh, the few bones that I've animated right now. So okay. So we're going over here. He's looking over there for a little bit. Kind of curious what's going on over there. Zoom out of here so we can see the others. And neck three. There we go. Rotate that some a little bit as well. So now he's kind of looking over there. And now he wants to look over on the other side. So let's rotate everything the other way. Okay. Looking over. Ooh, who's looking at me? Let's kind of do a little some subtle secondary motion in the animation there. Okay. So now let's add this to his walk cycle. Let's go ahead and save this while we're at it. And go back to NLA editor. And right here we've got our walk cycle selected. Let's go ahead and hit add, add action strip. And we want to do where did we name it? Head turn. Boom, right there. And it adds it above the the walk. And we gotta turn that eyeball back on so we can see what we're doing. You can see that it's added it there. And he's still walking. But his head's turning too. So he's So that's how you can combine multiple actions. To, to like say you have a character walking along talking to someone so you can animate their walk and put that as a cycle and then also animate their lip syncing like they're talking having a conversation so that's, that's an easy way to to do that so um, so one fun thing to do I don't know if it's fun but uh, we're, we see see him walking right now but his his uh, rig is really in the way from really seeing what the dragon looks like when he's walking so let's just hold down shift and turn off that layer and we can still see him walking and doing everything so anyways so that's just a basic walk cycle with a quadruped uh, the legs kinda go opposite guess they keep their balance diagonally um, and then the little toe flicks as they're walking it could work for dinosaurs or something like that too or even people if you want to get that detailed with their walking barefoot or something. But uh, anyways, I hope this wasn't too tedious. Um, 
hopefully you learned a thing or two. But uh, And also, I hope you enjoyed this whole Dragon series. Uh, I had a lot of fun making it. Hopefully you had a lot of fun watching it. But uh, Anyways, that's, that's going to be all for me. And uh, once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward. And I know that I said that I was done with the Dragon series, which I guess I am, but uh, I did notice that I had mentioned something about showing a flight animation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. won't take too long, I don't think. Uh, so that all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in here and do this. Let's turn on the... Hold down Shift and click on that layer there to show our armature layer. And... Let's go in here and let's minimize this just a little bit. And we're going to turn off this nonlinear actions. We're going to turn those off so we can edit a little easier. And we're going to go in here to our dope sheet. Go over here and grab our action editor. And let's just go ahead and delete the action that's currently loaded in here. Head turn. Let's go and delete that. And we'll select everything. And let's turn off the automatic keyframe insertion uh, and we're gonna hit alt R to clear out all rotations and alt G to clear out locations so we get our nice default pose back okay now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the light and ground plane layer off so it's not as distracting there in the way uh, so now we're gonna make a new action and we're gonna call this wing flaps okay and first thing I wanna do is kind of put uh, Quaid here in sort of a just a general relaxed pose uh, so we can have him like his, his whole body's relaxed except for the wings and the wings are doing the work so we don't need his his hands and feet to, to be doing anything unless he's you know he's carrying off a villager or something I don't know uh, so what we're gonna do is just kind of put them just kind of in a nice limp, relaxed pose there, and maybe kind of arch, arc the back a little bit, or I guess bow the back maybe, about like that. Okay, drag these back up here, and these guys as well. Now we're gonna go in here and curl the toes down. Let's grab the Rotate manipulator. Rotate those down. And this one a little bit more, maybe. There we go. Grab all those, copy, paste to the other side. I guess I gotta copy it first. There we go. No? It's not wanting to copy and paste. Odd. Copy. Paste. Maybe I gotta turn this on. Go ahead and remember to turn your automatic keyframe insertion back on once we start moving this into the pose we want. So actually location, rotation, and scale. I like to cover all three bases there. There we go. I guess you have to have keyframes set there. Um okay. And the same thing up here. Oh, I think I was copying and pasting to itself so that's why it didn't no, it didn't work so okay let's curl the hand fing the fingers on the hand as well or the claws I guess a little bit more on that one okay copy and paste opposite there we go and now we'll just kinda rotate the shoulders a bit so we can move these hands in kinda just clutched up underneath this his chest rather than just kinda hanging out in space that yeah and let's kind of do the same thing on the feet just bring those in going to rear view by hitting control and one on your numpad and the tails kind of in the way so we'll rotate up a little bit And they're kind of going through each other, and we can't have that. So let's rotate it up just some. And this one, rotate down a little bit. Part of my mumbling, if, <laughs> if that's getting on your nerves, I kind of just mumble as I'm working, as I'm sure you've noticed before. 
And uh, let's go ahead and rotate the tail down to where it's just kind of hanging there in space behind him. Maybe not curled quite so much. Oops. There we go. Okay. So now he's ready to start flapping those wings. Let's go ahead and put them... I guess kind of their, their pose they're in right now will probably be fine. We'll go ahead and spread them out just a little bit because they're getting ready to try to catch that air. So we'll just kind of get them ready to push down like that. And... Well, we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and do the, the whole animation of the wing flapping, and then I'll copy it over to the other side. Okay, so let's uh, do it kind of like we did on the walk cycle, every five frames. So since we're starting off on frame one, we'll jump up to frame six and go ahead and start animating the wing. And he's pushing down on that wind, so we're going to kind of have the wings... reacting against you know the air pressure like so okay so whoosh gotta have those sound effects whoosh. okay so frame 11 I'm gonna come on back oops on down and now they're starting to collapse so we can make the journey back upwards to start the cycle over again okay and on frame 16 go ahead and side view here go ahead and start rotating those back up and maybe collapse a little bit more and then let's see if we can't complete the loop now let's just copy everything on that first frame and go up to frame 21 and go ahead and paste it let's see how well that looks uh, might need another step in between. So let's undo that. And. Oh. Okay. Undo that to where we get that keyframe out. There we go. And let's uh, grab that base and kind of start raising it up like so. Maybe starting to straighten out some. Yeah, that'll help. Now we'll copy that first first frame. Go up to 26 and paste. Yeah, I think that'll work. Let's uh, set the the total number of frames to 26 so we can just play kind of see how it's going to look. I guess that looks okay. Mm. It's kind of an abrupt spin around right there, so let's work on that a little bit on this frame here. Did that help already? Almost. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks all right. Okay, so now we'll do the other side. So let's copy those three main segments that we animate. Copy and paste opposite. Go to frame six, copy, paste opposite. Ele uh, 11, same thing. Same thing on 16 and 21 and finally 26. Okay, so now we got our wings flapping pretty, fairly nicely there. 
Okay, so now we need the residual motion. Since the wings are flapping, the rest of the body can't be stock still. It's gonna it's gonna have some residual impact. The movement, like for example, when you shrug your shoulders, you know your your chest kind of flattens out a little bit, and your arms go up, and I don't know. Um, but anyways, we'll we'll work on this. So starting off here, we got our let's uh, do the hands and feet. Let's move this guy down just a little bit. There we go. And let's grab all those. Okay. And then as the wings are starting to come down, we'll have the hands and feet kind of going up a little bit. And as the wings are starting to come up, they're going to kind of go down some. And then we'll copy that very first frame back at the end. Okay. Kind of see that. Okay, and let's kind of do the same thing on the tail. We'll kind of curl it out a little bit as the wings are coming down. Then as they're starting to come back up, the tails start curling back underneath some. And then we'll copy that first one. Now one thing that'll help the head itself, let's kind of rotate it back a little bit there. Oh yeah, what we need to do, the chest, it needs to kind of participate here. So in this first frame, it's got his chest pu pushed out and is it's kind of arching or uh, yeah arcing his back to to get those wings up there as high as he can, and then kind of bending down as the wings are going down. What is this for? Why do I have a frame on frame thirteen? What is that? Ah, that was the neck. I'm going to delete that. Okay, the chest movement will help the neck bob the way it needs to. Okay, so it's kind of bending down. Then it's kind of start to bend back up as the wings are coming up. And then copy that very first one again. The end. There we go. Let's go ahead and just play the loop there. Not too bad. I think maybe the hands and feet need to move at a little bit different pace. So let's kind of just kind of just uh, adjust them some so they're not quite on the exact same movement, which looks a little fakeish to me. That's a little bit better. And then this guy, let's do the same thing there. We'll leave that first and last frame alone so we don't have to worry about copying it over. That's a little bit better. Okay, now to top it off, Let's uh, actually let's go ahead and give all these bones here on the head a keyframe here on the very first one, location, rotation, scale. So that way later when we go into the NLA editor, the nonlinear action editor, we can uh, use that head turn uh, along with with this one here. I'll show you that. I'll show you that when we get there. But let's go ahead and select all the pieces that are moving independently which would be the hips and then all the four hands and feet and we're gonna have the whole body react as the wings are flapping so when they're up we'll go ahead and leave it right there and as they start to come as the wings start to come down the body's gonna lift up some I 
like so. And then as the wings start to come up, the body's going to kind of start coming back down. So we'll copy that very first frame. Paste it there. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Kind of looks like we have a, a stutter in there at some point. Hmm. I guess the feet are coming down way too far here because the you can see the the IK bones are kind of stretched out there and we don't want that so let's fix those there we go and again that's better okay maybe they're coming up too far on that wing flap there let's bring them all down some Oops. Okay. So now if we play the loop, looks a little better. I think the reason it kind of looks like it's stuttering is it's getting to frame 26, and it's playing frame 26 and frame 1. So it's basically playing the frame the same frame twice. So if we set the end to be 25, it should get up to frame 20, 25, and then where it would have played 26, it plays 1 and starts to loop over. So it should be a little smoother now. Eh, a little bit. Okay, so that's a basic flight animation. And let's go ahead and kill it out of the action editor there and we'll go ahead and turn on the NLA editor up here again. Instead of the walk cycle, let's delete that and we're going to add the action strip and let's delete that out and it's going to be wing flaps. And we'll select that, expand this out some so we can see what we're doing. And the repeat, we're going to just drag that out and repeat it quite a few times just till it fills the the expanse for once. Go ahead and set this back up to 250. And then we'll turn the quid back on, the nonlinear action back on, turn the eyeball back on so we can see what we're doing there. Okay. And you notice, since we still have the head turn on there, there it takes place. Zoom way out so I can control the timeline a little easier. but it just kind of pops in like so. We don't want that. We want it to be a nice smooth transition. So let's select that head turn and go up here to where it says auto blend in and out. Uncheck that. I'm going to run that blend in quite a ways up. Well, this goes by frames. So 15 frames is basically a half second. 30 frames would be a full second. So I guess a half second would be fine. And then blend out the same thing. Okay, so now nice smooth transition over to looking over to the right and then a smooth transition back to looking forward after the head turn animation is done okay so he's kinda of just hovering there in space flapping those wings he's like oh what's over there I don't know anything over there nope okay okay so that's him just hovering now say for example you want him to use the same pose the same animation but you want him to actually travel across the sky well you could you could do a couple of things you could uh, create a controller bone and and attach all the the uh, independent bones like like the hip and the hands and feet to it and then move it or you can just go into object mode of our rig here and just animate it and so we'll say this first frame he's over here maybe kind of rotate it down a little bit and then by frame 90 you want him to be up here like so and since that animation is already on the armature in pose mode 
it's, it's going to be still on there as we're moving the actual armature itself. So that looks pretty nice, huh? So let's see what that looks like here. Yeah. And turn the bone layer off so we can kind of see him just by himself. Okay. So that's kind of a basic uh, wing flap animation. So hopefully that looks pretty nice to you. And um, I guess that's going to be done with this one. Thanks for watching the Dragon series. I've gotten a lot of nice comments and I appreciate those. So hopefully this will be the icing on the cake, as it were. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.